Howdy guys, Mac from Double Tap. Uh, really, before I get into the PowerPoint part of this video, I wanted to show you guys the three different rifles we used. Uh, first, we have a completely factory uh, Ruger SR556 gas piston gun with a chrome line match grade barrel. Uh, second gun is a custom built, built on Anderson upper and lower with uh, a uh, Colt barrel. It's actually a Colt M4 barrel. Uh, and then the last one is built with a DPMS barrel. Uh, different upper and lower. It's Frankenstein gun. Uh, the, uh, the first and last gun both have the uh, Bushnell AR223 scopes. And then the middle gun, for the sake of this, we just put a uh, center point uh, 6 to 14 uh, center point 6 to 14 uh, or 4 to 16 whatever it was uh, piece of glass on it the equipment's not as important as the testing method which I'll get into when we go into the PowerPoint or the uh, yeah, into the PowerPoint. I just kind of wanted to, so everybody knows the way this, you know, in the video that's, that the, that's going to get be referred to as the SR556. The middle gun is going to be the black gun. This end gun is going to be the green gun just because it's got green furniture on it for the sake of, you know, the video. But uh, let me get down and get set up for the PowerPoint and we'll be back here in a second. All right, howdy guys. All right, now, uh, we're into the the uh, the PowerPoint part of this. Uh, this is the real bullet dock data for the AR-15, and in this case, what everybody refers to is the M4, which you're actually not talking about a true M4. A true M4 is 14 and a half inch barrel. We are talking about 16 inch barrel, legal for civilian to own without short barrel rifle licensing through the ATF. But for the sake of argument, we're talking about the, the civilian M4 16-inch barrel gun. And what happens when you zero them at 25, 36, that's actually supposed to say 50, not 55 yards, 100 or 200 yards. So uh, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the rifles we used in the test. Uh, the first one I showed you there was the Ruger SR556, complete factory gun. Uh, it does have a 16-inch chrome line barrel. Uh, it's a one and nine twist gun. It's got a Bushnell AR 223 3 to 12 power uh, scope on it. It's got a bullet drop compensator in there. They call it like the drop zone. But actually, the bullet drop compensator is irrelevant because in this testing, the same point was aimed at at the target every time. It, this is about what the bullets do at the different distances, not adjusting for Kentucky windage or using mill dops or BDCs or any of that. This was not testing the scopes. This was testing the bullet's performance at the different distances with the specific zeros. So the same exact point was aimed at every time from the different different from the different distances. Uh, but anyway, that barrel is stamped 5.56 NATO. Uh, and for the sake of the targets you're going to see, that gun is named SR556. Uh, the next gun you saw was that custom bill. It's an Anderson upper and lower on a uh, Colt barrel, 16-inch Colt barrel. It is a one and seven twist gun. Uh, it's just got a cheap center point Walmart 4 to 12 power scope on it. Now that scope does actually happen to be like a mill dot scope. Or not like it is mill dot scope. But that's irrelevant for what we used it for. Uh, we just used it for the magnification to get, you know, our bullet impacts as consistent as we could. Uh, that barrel is actually stamped by 5.6 NATO and for the sake of the target you're going to see that is black gun. That last gun you saw, we're going to call it, it was custom too. It was, it's got a 16-inch uh, DPMS light barrel. Uh, it's not the one that's on the Oracle, it's the next one up, I don't remember. It's just, it's a light barreled. 16-inch uh, gun, which actually performed pretty well through this. Uh, it's a 109 twist gun. It, it too has the Bushnell AR223 uh, drop zone scope, 3 to 12 power. 
that barrel is stamped 5.56 it's not stamped 5.56 NATO I don't think that matters but I'm just giving you the information uh, and for the sake of the testing that is green gun now let's talk about targets what we actually shot at, I guess I should have put a picture of the target now I shot at in this it is a uh, we shot at a grid target that's used for load development uh, but when I transferred the bullet pin packs as I compiled, compiled all this data and wrote it all down and did it I wanted to do it on a more man like target so when I actually for the targets we put here in the video what I decided to use was the official IDPA target now I use the official IDPA target for a couple different reasons one it is reasonably like uh, the size of the upper torso of an average human being it's 30 inches tall well 30 and 3 quarter with the outline uh, the center of the crosshairs were aimed at the top of the zero ring and let me tell you why I did that that is at three inches down and through testing and reading and this is an arguable point everybody can argue this until they're blue in the face this is where I chose to make it match because most people when they hold for what they call center mass is at the apex of the shoulder curve which is about three inches down in reality it's about nine inches below the top of your head uh, when you tell people trained un untrained uh, they start shooting in high stress situations that's where they tend to call center mass as far as up and down is at the end of the apex of the shoulder so that's why I used this so I had a defined line and a known distance so I could show you where the bullets in you know impact if you shoot lower if you shoot higher adjust it accordingly this is just about bullet data we did not actually shoot at IDPA targets I shot at a grid target that way I could get my my, my measurements exact or you know exactly as I could uh, anyway that's the target you're going to be seeing this bullet impact on you can come back and forth or pull up your own whatever but all we're worried about is up and down what you have is that center circle is eight inches it's three inches up from that to the neck and it's a six inch head so with all that be it as it may let's talk about how we collected the data each firearm was zeroed at the testing distance with the ammunition from a Oh, unopened case, thousand rounds of Lake City M193 55 gave standard military issue ammo. All the shooting was done with the ammo out of the exact same case, exact same lot. Uh, we went through a pile of it yesterday, uh, but all it's not various different types of ammunition because what we were trying to test is what the same ammunition the every ammunition is going to perform differently through every different gun if at the end of the day if you want to know exacts on this you need to take your gun and the ammunition you're shooting and go do what I did uh, but this is just for some good data and that's what we got out of this we got some damn good data all shooting was done at every distance out of a Cald Caldwell lead sled I wanted to take as much human error out of this as I possibly could uh, it was all every every even the zeros at 25 yards were done out of Caldwell lead said every every distance every shot there was a three shot group and we triangulated it in the center of the three shot group was the data that we recorded uh, not the middle one I mean we triangulated it so just like the military does you know triangulate and we, we and we counted it accordingly uh, I did check the muzzle velocity for each gun and they were so close I decided not even to talk about it uh, with we, we did 10 muzzle velocities for each gun throughout the high and the low and at the end of it they were all within 82 feet per second of each other uh, two of them were actually right on top of each other they were like three feet per second different uh, so it kind of went muzzle velocity is irrelevant and it really is I mean yeah I know 82 feet is a little bit of a swing it's almost 100 feet per second but for the sake of this I don't know if it was the twist in the gun uh, the, the, and, and the difference was the one in seven twist gun that was the one that was really different uh, so anyway you can figure out your twists and what your bullets are doing on your own the target I was shooting at was a uh, load development target that we shoot at at a thousand yards 
that's a 65 by 40 inch grid uh, one inch squares then I transferred the data onto a notebook and from there I put it into the little targets you're about to see for the sake of the video uh, and I, like I said I should have put a picture of the, the target up here but I didn't uh, scopes were maximum amount of magnification for all shooting to just to enhance the accuracy as much as possible uh, I did I, this is all intended for use with red dot scopes I used glassed magnified optics for precision to get the best data as possible uh, at the end of the day this really this data is really to be used with if you're you know your your zero and your EOTech or your aim point or even your iron sights uh, in the different ranges and what the bullets gonna do at the you know the known distances uh, I did all the shooting yesterday absolutely all of it everything that was recorded I did that way I was lining up you don't have any variance of you know person A is lining up at the top of the crosshair person B is lining up. I did all the shooting yesterday that we recorded uh, so first we're going to talk about the 25 yard or what a lot of people refer to as the army zero uh, there is the bullet impact out of the SR556. Now the corresponding color to the dots is obviously where the bullet landed. Uh, we had a 25 yard zero so that was dead center. Uh, now aiming at the same point, aiming at the zero point, 25 yards, I did not adjust Kentucky windage, did not move the crosshairs. We went back, when we moved back to 50 yards I aimed for the exact same point. Moved back to 100 we aimed at the same point. This is what the bullets actually do if you aim at the same point at these different distances. <clears throat> now, here's the problem. Uh, with the 25 yard Army Zero being at the top of where we decide, I decided quote unquote center mass is, <clears throat> the 200 yard and 300 yard go over the head. Now, that being said, if you were low, aiming lower on the target, the 300 yard I'm sorry, the 200 yard and the 300 yard would be both quote unquote hits. I don't believe personally, after all the training I've done, I mean, and I'm, by that I mean training of people, that people aim at the center of that target. Yeah, they sure aim at the center of that target when you draw a cute little line around it. But in the really real world, when people are shooting at just targets that are pictures of people with no kill zones drawn on them, people tend to shoot higher, in my opinion that's why I went this way if you don't like it redo the data yourself this is how I did it uh, but that was out of the SR556 that's the black gun and there's the green gun pretty consistent across them uh, I mean we had a difference between 11 and a half inches out of the one and seven twist gun and I guess the big one was 14.7 inches out of the uh, SR556 as far as you know the low the uh, the most distance, I guess, the lowest shot, I guess is the best way to put it, whatever, uh, the furthest shot. But other than that, it is a pretty consistent across them three guns. Again, this is all the exact same ammunition out of the same case of Lake City M193 ammo, uh, which is a 55 grain jacketed uh, boat tail. I believe they are boat tail. Honest God, I don't know the answer to that. I think they are boat tail. Anyway, there's 25 yard Army Zero. Um, we'll talk about them here in a little bit. Now let's talk about the Marine Zero or the 36 yard. This is kind of what started this controversy. Uh, we have a little bit different grouping. Not better, not worse. Different. Uh, the only thing, the only miss you have out of this with uh, just that center mass hold is the 500 yard hold and you can do what I like to call the just over the head hold with your most of your red dots and score a combat effective hit with this hold which means you get out to 500 yards all you do is hold the dot over the person's head press the trigger with good shooting fundamentals you should score a combat effective hit uh, so 
this is the 36 yard Marine Zero. Uh, there's what the black gun did. And there's what the green gun did. Uh, again, pretty consistent across the board. Different guns, different bullet impacts uh, here and there. But at the end of the day, they're all pretty, pretty consistent. Uh, so what started this video was somebody said, what about 50 yard zero? Well, let's talk about the 50 yard zero. Uh, we'll start with the SR556 again. Uh, 50 yard zero, not bad at all. Uh, the 400 yard impact is about twice as deep or twice as low as the 300 yard impact, or the, I'm sorry, with this zero, the 400 yard strike is about twice as low as it was with the, the 36 yard zero. But still combat effective. It's, it's just out of the kill zone, or what I, I like to consider the kill zone or the vital zone or whatever. Um, but, you know, if you know you were shooting at 400 yards, go to a head hold, you're back in the game, go to, you know, half a head hold, now you're really in the game. Uh, the 500 yard is you know, about 10 inches lower than what it is with 36 which means you got to give it a little bit more over the head to get a combat effective hit but all that being said not a bad grouping not a bad or you know as far as grouping I'm talking about up and down uh, pretty consistent shooting across them uh, across the guns and one of the things I like about the 55 yard zero is with that zero point, you have you know two above and two below. Where with 36 yard zero, you got a lot more high rounds over your zero point. Uh, but you know, for each mission, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, let's talk about 100 yard zero for a minute. Now, this is typically what you're going to do with a uh, BDC or a uh, you know a mil dot scope. And you know what you have is you have that 100 yard zero. You got the different uh, bullet impacts, but again, the four and the five hundred are misses. Now, the four hundred is a miss on the IDPA target. That is going to strike you at a twenty-four inches about is about groin level off of what I determined. I decided that my quote-unquote center mass was going to be. Is that still going to be combat effective? Maybe. You know, it really depends on, I mean, you hit them anywhere, it's going to be, you know, it's going to have an effect on them. But again, you move up to a head or, you know, over a half hold, head hold, now you're combat effective. The 500 yards, good bit lower yet. You know, now we're, you know, the bullets are kind of landing, you know. I mean, you're really getting towards the calves or the knee, you know, below the knees. But uh, if you're using a... BDC reticle or you know some kind of red dog that has BDC compensation on it this is where you're gonna need to zero just because this is what your scope is intent is pre-compensated for uh, and you'll notice that the 200 yard shot and the 25 yard shot are exactly the same bullet impact with 100 yard zero and there's some math to that that makes that pretty consistent but what you can do is if you need to make a precision shot at 25 yards is where that would be a holdover for the 200 yard which would typically be the first dot on your BDC you go that same distance low I'm not going to get into that this that'll get confusing never mind uh, but here's the other two guns we shot out there at 100 yards, or I'm sorry, we shot out to 500 yards with 100 yard zero. Uh, the only major difference was the SR556. Uh, I actually, after we got that data, went back through on that gun, verified to zero, reshot it at 300 yards, and got the exact same thing. I cannot explain under any circumstances why the SR556 shot that much higher. I, I, I can't explain it. I don't know. Uh, it was uh, like I said when I started collecting the data and comparing. I thought, wow, that's a major difference, uh, and it doesn't make any sense. 
went back to 100 yards, verified a zero on the rifle, went back to 300 yards, strapped it back in the lead sight, shot it, and got the exact same result. And that's part of the reason I tell you, you need to go verify your gun with the ammunition you're using. Because th that was enough of a difference. I went, man, I need to go check that out. And sure enough, it, 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 it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't something I did. It verified accurately. So anyway, talk about the 200-yard target. The fact is, all that data was so close on the 200-yard target with a 200-yard zero. Here's the one target. I mean, 400 yards, which is technically just on this IDPA target in the really real world, it's no different than what that 100 yard is. The 400 yard is just off the, the, the vital zone, and the 500 yards pretty much the same. Uh, a lot of people like the 200 yard zero. Uh, a lot of people will, you, you'll hear them say, I zeroed an inch high at 100. This is why they do it. Uh, so yes, at the end of the day, you can cheat this around a little bit and quote unquote make it work. But until you go out and shoot all this data at the same distances, excuse me, you're never going to truly know, going to know how your gun is going to perform. You're not going to know how your gun is going to perform at 400 or four or five hundred yards unless you go to four or five hundred yards, strap in and go for a ride. Uh, so let's go over the breakdown with 25 yard zero. Uh, has a point and shoot window of about eight inches but it's split ranges and what I mean by split ranges and the two and three hundred are over the top of that of my target the way I have it set up. Uh, if you are shooting lower in the target two and three are going to be high head shots. For the sake of the way I did the breakdown the two and the three are over the head, which means you got to hold under a little bit. But eight inch kill window or point and shoot window, uh, four and five hundred yards are combat effective on a center mass hold. That's a benefit of this, which, you know, you got to hold under a little bit when you get out to two or three hundred yards, or but you can back up to that center mass. Four and five hundred yards become combat effective on a center mass hold. So if you are intending, you know, if your mission is to engage targets out three, four, five hundred yards, this is probably a good zero for you, right? Uh, easy zero to do with a red, stop, red dot type optic for a shooter with minimal equipment or minimal skill level, which means it's a very easy zero to do for just Bob down the road Got an AR-15, Walmart red dot, no uh, no magnifiers or anything behind it and all that. He's going to be able to do a 25-yard zero. And another nice thing about this, it's pretty easy to re-verify in the field. Most anywhere you can find 25 yards to shoot. Uh, and because you're just shooting 25 yards, this may or may not matter to you. The echo is not going to carry near as far if you can get some down angle on it. Anyway, all that aside... Uh, let's talk about that 36 yard Marine Zero. Has a point and shoot window of about 7 inches. A uh, little bit smaller. Is it that much of a difference? Probably not. The 400, shot, 400 yard shot is combat effective on a center mass hold. Uh, that's a good thing. Hold o only one holdover to remember at 500 yard, yard shot is about 30 inches low. I call that the dot overhead hold will score an effective combat hit. Uh, easy zero to do for that you know, red dot type optic with mental equipment or skill level. Doesn't matter if you're a real good shooter, you're only shooting 36 yards, you can get a def decent three shot group to zero your rifle and uh, again easy to verify that 36 yard zero in the field. Uh, let's move out to that 50 yard zero has probably the best point and shoot window of about five inches. That's a, it's a good benefit of it. And I know the guy that asked me about it said, see, I told you, but it's got a little bit of a downside too. Uh, again, the 400 yard shot is combat effective on a center mass hold, although it is just almost out of the vital area. Now, 
that's based on my testing, the way I did it. If you are holding lower in your center mass, that 400 yard shot is now out of the vital area. Uh, and again, the 500 yard uh, holdover is that dot overhead or dot overhead and a half. Uh, it's actually not 30 inches. You can see I copied and pasted a lot of this because I got tired of typing it and I forgot to fix that. Anyway, uh, the dot overhead or dot overhead and a half will affect you, score you an effective combat effective hit at 500 yards. Uh, it's a little more difficult to do the 50 yard zero for a lot of people. Uh, I know it's only a couple more yards, but with no magnifiers, no equipment, or minimal skill levels, at 50 yards people start to spread out a little bit more. Uh, which makes it a little more difficult to verify it in the field. Uh, so, pros and cons: if you got a good bench, got a sled, you're pretty good, you know, pretty decent, consistent shooter, and all that. Fifty yard zero is not a bad zero to run. Uh, let's talk about the hundred yard zero point and shoot window of about seven inches. Uh, one of the other great things about this all the hits are below the zero height you know and all the other ones we had some hits above the zero height all the hits on 100 yard are below the zero height uh, the 400 and 500 yard are misses with the center mass hold however the 400 just barely out of the the combat effective level it is rather difficult to do a zero for a red dot type optic for a shooter with minimal equipment or skill level uh, and again it's rather difficult to verify that in the field uh, but side note that 100 yard zero is at the end of the day what you really want to use for uh, any kind of bullet BDC level scope or mil dot scope uh, 200 yard <clears throat> zero if you're going to run it has point shoot window of about 8 inches uh, out 300 yards 400 and 500 are misses with the center mass hold. Again, 400 just barely, but it is. Uh, very difficult for a shooter with a red dot optic to, to, to zero at this range. Even if you have a little bit higher skill level, this is a tough zero, consistent at 200 yards. Uh, very difficult to verify in the field. So here's my final thoughts on this, and here's the point. There is no such thing as a best zero. Each one has its advantages and its disadvantages based on the mission that you are setting up for. You need to know what you're setting your gun up for. I use a 36 yard zero because as a good general overall, this is what I'm going to use my gun with the red dot optic for. I like it. That's the one I want to use. Does that say there's anything wrong with the 50? No, there's not. Anything wrong with the 25? No, there's not. Because honestly, I do not intend on engaging targets out to four or five hundred yards. Can I if I need to? Absolutely, but I do not intend on it. With my red dotted gun, I'm going to grab something with a piece of glass on it if I'm intended on engaging targets. Now, if I get put in a position where I didn't have that option, I can score some four and five hundred shot hits with my red dot. I've got a magnifier on the back of it, which helps drastically. But uh, that is equipment and skill level, and I practice out to those ranges, freehand. Uh, do I get, can I shoot the middle of a snuff can at 500 yards with a red dot? No, I can't. Can I get a combat effective hit 10 out of 10 times? On most days. I won't tell you there ain't bad days out there, but on most days, if you're standing out there at 500 yards and all I have is my red dot set up, I am going to put bullets on target. Uh, the best zero for red dots is not always gonna is not gonna be the best for traditional scopes with mil dots or bullet drop compensators. Uh, obviously, if you've got those, you're gonna be looking at the hundred yard zero. Uh, you know, really, them first three, and I only threw the two hundred yard in there because I talked about it. Really, them first three, the twenty five, thirty six, or fifty are, are pretty much your choices for red dots, and then. Uh, you need to verify your gun at these ranges if you ever intend to shoot at them. Each gun and each ammunition are going to perform differently through, and not to mention everybody shoots a little bit different. Uh, you need to work on your skill levels out to four or five hundred yards if you intend to shoot that far. Uh, it's not hard to do, you just need to get out there and do it. So anyway, that's a breakdown on the, uh, the target impacts. Uh, 
you, I know everybody's going to tear it apart and argue with me and all that. This was my data. I collected on three guns by myself. Well, I wasn't by myself. I had a couple guys with me. But I did all the shooting. This was the data out of three guns with all running ammunition out of the same case of ammo. Uh, so no different ammo types. Reasonably sim. I mean, no, not reasonably. They're similar guns. They were all considered M4 style guns, civilian version M4, 16 inch barrel guns. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a one with one and seven twists, so I could put that variable in it. Uh, I tend to buy one and nine because I started two a million years ago. Uh, it was easier to shoot pterodactyls down with one and nine twist. Anyway. Uh, Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, got questions, comments, and I know there'll be some comments. Feel free to put them down there. I get to them when I can. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support. Uh, next video, we're going to probably put together the the uh, flat dark earth gun I've been building. or getting ready to build. Finally got everything together. So, uh, appreciate you guys watching. Have a good day.